Hey everybody, I am so glad to be back with you this morning on Crazy Faith TV, the most powerful place on the planet. Thank you to Bishop Richardson and to Elder Yates for the recommendation to come back to the Allen Chapel AME Church of High Springs. Family, it is a privilege to return as your pastor. On behalf of Lady LaJoyce and myself, we look forward to what God will do in this place during this year. Now, join me in proudly saying our House of Crazy Faith mission and vision statement. Who are we? We are Allen Chapel, the House of Crazy Faith. In this place, we worship, study, and believe God's word. We endeavor to create an atmosphere for healing, deliverance, and breakthroughs in every aspect of our lives. Our mission is to be a safe haven of peace for our community. In this place, no dream is too big. Our praise is authentic. We walk in our purpose, and God always hears and answers our prayers. We are the House of Crazy Faith, and we believe God. Super Tuesday is just around the corner, and if you have not voted, you have one more chance, and I'm depending on you to get it right. Get out and vote on Tuesday. Thank you to those of us who have already mailed in our ballots and have participated in early voting. But for those of you who are traditionalists and want to wait in line on Tuesday, listen, we are counting on you. This is a critical moment in our lives and in this country, and every vote must count. So get out to vote and let's watch God change things. We are in a season of harvest, but we are still sowing seeds that we know will come back to us in faith. And so my family and friends, as we embark upon a brand new conference year, I want to challenge us to be better givers, better sowers, so that God can show us better reaping. I challenge us to give as God has given to us. Thank you for all that you continue to do to support this ministry. Please continue to sow electronically via Givelify. The link is at the very bottom of this video. You can click on that link and sow your seed, or you can mail your seed, send it to Allen Chapel PO Box 1335, High Springs, Florida 32655. God is so good, and we appreciate all you do. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. You don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning, troubles they don't last always. There's a friend named Jesus who will wipe every tear away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know. My life is in your hands 
With Jesus I can take it With Him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands I'm so blessed to be able to share in this message with you today as we embark upon a season of thanksgiving. Listen, today's message will be centered around praise, and I want to look at Psalms 107, stanzas one and two of Psalm 107. Let's read that scripture together. It says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now, stanza two of that Psalm is what really does it for me. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those who have been redeemed from the hands of their foes. Today, I want to preach from the subject, the praiser's testimony. I hope that this word blesses you and your family as we embark upon this season of Thanksgiving. I have a lot of praise in my spirit and it comes along with the testimony. So let's get ready for the word from Psalms 107, a praiser's testimony. As we enter this divine season of Thanksgiving, I want us to begin this season in praise because praise and Thanksgiving go hand in hand. Praise is the very thing that can keep us sane in the midst of all hell going on and breaking loose around us. Praise is the key that unlocks the door to blessings being unleashed in our lives. However, praise is also the result of God supernaturally and divinely delivering us in times of trouble. You can only be a praiser if you have a relationship with God because praise is the baby that comes out after we have engaged in a spiritual moment of worship with the Lord and he's planted the seed of his goodness in our lives. Whenever you have come out of something, you would be a fool not to give God the glory. That's why I tell folk all the time, you can't judge folk by the praise that you see on the outside without understanding the story on the inside of them that has now pushed them towards that outward praise. Traditionally, when we would gather in the sanctuary, we would begin our worship experience with the doxology saying, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And it is important for us to understand that even in the context of worship, worship must begin with praise. And so my family and friends, every day you wake up, Your life must begin with praise because praise is the one thing that connects us to God, whether we feel we are connected to him or not. Here it is now, because I want you to understand praise is not always directly connected to how we feel, but praise is a mandate for everyone who has been delivered, for everyone who has been bought with a price, and for everyone who is called a true believer of the almighty God. And in this psalm, this psalm that we're looking at today, Psalm 107, this psalmist is telling us that praise is the order of the day, but he's letting us know that God is the supreme deliverer, which warrants us to perpetually praise him for all of our days. As a matter of fact, he starts off stanzas one and two of this psalm saying, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endures forever. One of our testimonies should be as a praiser that we have experienced firsthand what mercy feels like. Because the truth be told, we wouldn't be watching this message today if mercy hadn't been a part of our lives. We wouldn't have everything we have today if mercy had not been a part of our lives. And so the first mandate for the praiser or the first reflection of a praiser or the first part of the testimony 
testimony of a praiser is that God has been merciful. And so the psalmist tells us not only that has not only has God been merciful, but because God has been merciful, we have been redeemed. I know that there's a lot of folk who are watching this broadcast. You've been saved for a long time. You've been cleaned up for a long time. It's been a long time since you could sin the way that you used to. But if you are bought with a price, if you've been washed, the Bible says that you have been redeemed and the redeemed should be the loudest, should be the best, should be the most vocal praisers because you know from a firsthand experience what mercy feels like. And so in stanza number two of Psalm 107, the Bible tells us that let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But in the New International Version, the word says, let all of the redeemed of the Lord tell all the story. Lord, have mercy. That's going to bless somebody because I want you to catch the difference in the translations. The King, the King James Version says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But verse number two in the New International Version says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell all the story. Because, and I want us to pick, I want us to pay particular attention to that verse out of the NIV this morning because we have to tell all of our story. We have to get out of this mindset that we don't want the world to know what the Lord has done for us. But don't you know that somebody else's salvation, that somebody else's blessing, that somebody else's breakthrough is predicated off of you opening up your mouth and giving God the glory for what he's done in your life? I dare you even right now in the midst of you watching this broadcast in the midst of you sitting on your sofa sitting in your car riding to work or whatever it is you're doing I dare you to think about some of the stuff that God has just brought you out of this week think about some of the stuff that the Lord has brought you over in 2020 if you've survived COVID you ought to give God praise if you've come through heartache and pain you ought to, you ought to give God praise if you've been able to eat in the midst of a pandemic you ought to give God praise. Don't just tell some of your story, but tell all of your story. Tell the world that the Lord picked you up. Tell the world that you were dirty and the Lord washed you. Tell the world that you were lonely and the Lord loved you. Give God the glory through your testimony because his mercy endures forever. My family and friends, the testimony of a praiser, the praiser's real testimony testimony comes out of his daily walk with God because when we walk with God on a daily basis we understand that God is number one a deliverer and a praiser's testimony comes out of a place where they have experienced intimate deliverance is there anybody watching this broadcast this morning that you've been delivered out of some bad situations has God ever delivered you out of some bad habits have God ever delivered you out of some bad people, out of some bad situationships, the Lord specializes in delivering us when we even don't think or realize we need to be delivered. But how many of you know that God is a God who will continue to pull you out, who will continue to pull you through, and not only pull you out and pull you through, but he'll lift you up and elevate you, and the word says that he will make your enemies your footstool. And I give God the glory because even in my times of distress and even in my times of trouble, praise opened up some doors for me that my name could not. Praise opened up some situations for me when I thought the devil was going to get the last word. Has praise ever stopped anybody from going to jail? Has praise ever stopped somebody from cussing somebody out? Has praise ever stopped somebody from getting in an accident? I dare somebody to think about all the times God has delivered you and give him the glory that you're not where you used to be and you're striving for better. Somebody shop better right where you are. God is going to make things better because you're a praiser. God is going to lift you to better because you are a praiser. Not only my family and friends do we praise God because he's a deliverer. No, but the ultimate testimony for a praiser is that we praise God just because of who he is. That's right, my family.
family and friends. It doesn't matter how much the Lord gives you. It doesn't matter how much the Lord delivers you from. It doesn't matter how much the Lord allows you to accumulate and acquire in your life. The main reason why we praise God is because of who he is, not for anything that he does. We praise him because he is omnipotent and omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at the same time and he has supreme authority. We praise God because we realize that without him, we would not be able to stand. We praise God because we know that from him, all of our blessings come down to us. And so like the old church used to say, when praises go up, the blessings come down. And I guarantee you, if you make praise a part of your daily routine, you will begin to see God for who he really is. Because God is a healer when you allow praise to come into a sick room. God is a lawyer when you allow praise to enter into a courtroom. God is a way maker when you allow God to come into a dark place. Is there anybody watching this broadcast this morning that says, I've tried the Lord for myself and I know him to be a deliverer. And so I praise him for who he is. And if he doesn't do anything else for me, he's already done enough. And so one of my favorite songs says, praise is what I do when I want to be close to you I lift my hands in praise and I vow to praise you in the good and the bad I vow to praise you when I'm happy and when I'm sad I'll praise you in all that I go through because praise is what I do is there anybody watching this message who says just where I am I want to give God praise for every mountain He's brought me over for every storm. He's pulled me through for every valley. We shout hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Do you know him today? Have you tried him? Is that your testimony that he will make a way? Give God some praise today. Simply put, a praiser's testimony is God delivered me. And I simply praise him for who he is. Are you a praiser? Praise opens doors that our pedigrees cannot. Praise will open doors that our names and our money will never be able to open. And praise can close some doors that the enemy always thought he had control over. I pray that by the end of this year, you intentionally will become a praiser. Trust me, when praises go up, blessings do come down. This week, I'm praying that God will walk before you to guide your path. I'm praying that our God walks behind you just to watch your back. I'm praying this week that the Lord walks right by your side so you don't know what it feels like to be lonely. And finally, may the Lord walk all the way around you just to keep you covered. Are you a praiser? Well, you should have a testimony. Have a good week.